Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you probably the easiest way to create seamless patterns with Canva. And the reason why I'm, I'm showing this is because I've seen some tutorials of people kind of like taking elements and putting them against a line here. And they're pr trying to basically make the certain elements seamless by making them repeat. But I have a different strategy that I think is super, super simple. I've never really shared it, but I thought other people knew about it, but it is super simple. And uh, it comes out really, really good. So I'll give you an example here. So what you need to do is you need to create a background color. So you need to have a background color, whatever color you want that to be. All right. And then what you're going to have is you're going to have other elements in front of the background color as that different color, right? So you're going to have to have two elements. Now, the elements can have multiple colors if you really want them to. I'm just going to use two colors here as an example for this tutorial. And I'm going to show you how I kind of got creative with this tutorial. And I got some different ideas uh, from different patterns that I searched on Google. Like you could see here, this is from Shein. And um, there's all kinds of different patterns here on the shirt. Uh, you got another example here. And they're kind of like, they could be considered seamless. This one's not seamless, obviously. This is not seamless, but the pattern I'll show you is going to be seamless. And it's going to have different approaches, kind of similar to this, right? So once you kind of create your elements, you, you want to have an el a bunch of different elements in each square. So this is a square or a canvas. And notice how I do have different elements than in here. So I can go ahead and show you in a grid view. All these different elements are different. So I'll go here and I'll create another one, for example. So I'll go here and I'll search for an element. So I could search here like, uh, let's search for king, for example. Right. And I'll take this crown. And I can turn this like that and I can match the colors. So my goal is to match the colors and I might search for something like a dagger. Okay. And something like this, I could put this here and keep this the same color as well. And once again, you don't have to necessarily have all the elements be the same color. I'm just simply doing that for this tutorial. And I might go over here, right? And go over here and search for, let's see, like some LV patterns. Um, you know, no, let's go with a diamond. Why not? Let's search for a diamond and we'll go for something like this. And I'll try to make it, I'll try to match the same kind of size that this is, this is bringing to the, to the canvas. So I might have to decrease this just slightly and something like this, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download all the different elements that I have. So here I have this where I just added elements like this, added elements like this, like this, like this, and so on. Uh, if you notice, all my elements are not touching any kind of border in Canva, right? So they're not touching any kind of border. And that's actually, it serves a purpose for a reason. And I'll show you why. So I'll go over here. I'll hit download. I've already downloaded some of the others. I just didn't download these two, the ones that I created in front of you. So I'll just hit download on those, right? So once those are downloaded, I'm going to go into a different Canva uh, session. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I have a different canvas that I opened up here in Canva. And I'll show you exactly what's going on in my screen. But I'm going to go over here, take the two elements that I've added, and just paste them into my Canva elements section. And what I want you to do is go over here to elements and search for like for example, rectangle or even square, you could search square as well. So we could search square and then we're going to go to the frames section. So we're going to over here and click frames and you're going to see all these different kinds of frames. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing me literally put down certain parts of those elements into the canvas here. And I can use that as my Canva element or pattern creator, right? So these elements right here, are all frames just sandwiched in a another square, right? So here I have this square one here, this one. I just copy and paste it and put one, two, three, four. So this is an example of this, right? They're literally the exact same thing. So this here, this is a pattern and I can download this, right? And let's say, let's make it like 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. Go over here and hit download, right? And I'll hit download and why that's downloading or while that's download or already downloaded. But you could see here, this is the pattern now, right? So I can take this 
and it will 100% be seamless because I can take this and I can upload it into Canva. Uh, or Redbubble, excuse me. And the the cool thing about Redbubble is that it has um, this grid type feature. So I can go over here and I can click choose pattern and I can cl click offset or I can click regular. It doesn't really make a difference. If I click regular, you could see how it looks, right? And you could see, let's, let's do it on the graphic t-shirt so you guys can kind of get it a little bit better of a view. But you could see here how it looks and I can decrease the size. I can make it look like this. Right, I can decrease it a lot more if I wanted to, so something like that, or I can increase it. You know, it just comes up to how I want to do it. Now, the reason why this is seamless and I don't have to worry about like the hard parts of trying to make elements fit is because I'm never crossing the elements over a certain border in the first step of the process. So, like every element is fixed in its own canvas here. So, let's go ahead and try this over here, for example. Right, so here I have a bunch of different frames which are perfect squares. And then in the middle, I have one square that replaces the four that would have been here. So how can we make this work? So I go over here to the ones that I've already added. And let's just say I have this king and dagger. So I want to place that in the middle. And then let's say I have this here, right? And then I have this here, right? So now I'm starting to create somewhat of a pattern, right? And if I really wanted to, I can always change what's in the middle here to make it more uniform and make it look a little bit better. So, like, for example, if once I complete adding all these different elements, let's just go ahead and add them here. And I say, you know what? This is a little bit too too dry, right? It's It looks stale almost. It needs more character. I could take something like this and put this here, put this here, right? I can take this, put this here, put this here. Let's go ahead and move this, and that could be a new pattern. And I could actually take this and apply it, but let's say I say, okay, well, this pattern looks good, but I want a little more detail here. What I can do is I can either just start placing different elements like this, since it's all the same color, I can move this, right? And I can, hold on real quick, let me go ahead and do this. Place it kind of like this, you could see, right? So I could do something like this, and this is me changing how the canvas looks entirely or right and that's another let's actually download this because I, I I do like the way this looks but I can rotate certain things here kind of like this so I can rotate this here and they don't have to be all the same you know I mean you can switch it up how you want to switch it up so I'll double click rotate to the right I can take this one rotate this one slightly let's just say kind of like this for example and it's not going to be perfect. Obviously, things are going to be different, but you, you can kind of set it up the way you want to. I can go over here, click on Smart Crop, and it can crop the image if I want to. I'm not going to, but that's just an example. And there's different things that I can do. So let's just say, um, let's go back to the other example, okay, where the image looked like this. And let's say I want a little more elements here. I'll go back to this image, which is the the one with the crown and the dagger, and I can start seeing if I can add something to it. So I might look at something like this, try to go like this here, and then just add some small elements to it if I wanted to. Okay, and I could actually look at this here. Let me go ahead and take a look at this. And I could zoom in and just see what are the different effects that are being made. So I can lock this here, and everything that I touch can't move effectively. And I could say, okay, well, I have this, these kind of emblems here with this line. So let me search if I have this curved line. So I could search for curve. And let's get out of the frame section. Go to all. Or let's search for a line. Right? And I can go over here and select something like this. Now, I personally, I don't know if I would pick that specifically. I could look around. Let's see here. We can go to, let's type in Royal, or let's type in Saints Emblem. Okay, something like this. I can get rid of this. I was going to see if it had more. Let's see, uh, View Collection, maybe? Yeah, definitely not that. So let's go ahead and head back. Uh, let's type in Emblem, maybe? Uh, let's see, we have this, 
Let's see if we can see more like this. All right, there's a lot of different stuff going on here. Um, let's go to, let's type in line. And yeah, I mean, we have a whole bunch of different options, but let's go and zoom out here. I can take this here and I can make this that same, I'm matching the same color, right? Something like this. I can take this and put it here, right? Just however I want to do it. I can, you know, leave it like this. I can add more elements. Um, but let's just say I wanted to go with this, right? I can take this elements that are similar to this boxed in type of pattern, right? And so since I've locked the canvas, it's kind of very similar to or, or it's essentially, it's very similar to a background. So now this whole thing has affected as a background so that whenever I drag an element over, it's not going to cross over into the actual design. And I might have to zoom in to add in certain things like, because it might be difficult sometimes to move it around or measure or, or however it is. But let's just say I wanted it to look something like this. Let's take one more of these and let's move one here. And I could take this. Or actually, you know what, let's go with one of these. Grab this here, paste it here, and we could flip this. So I'll go over here into flip, vertical flip. And you can get as creative as you want. You're not necessarily using any AI or anything like that, but you can get as creative as you want. You could see how this pattern kind of worked out. You can create a pattern like this, where you have a bunch of uh, squares in a grid and then the, the big square in the middle, which equates to four squares. You can do something like this where you have kind of a section here, which we'll work on in just a minute, but I can take this and we could actually test and see how it will look live in, in Redbubble. So I can take this, right? And I can go 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. That's just my preference. You could, you guys can do whatever size you want. I'm going to go over here, hit download and give it a minute. I'm going to go over here to Redbubble and just drag and drop whatever, whichever one it is. And this is how it looks here, right? So that doesn't look too bad. And I can take this, okay, and I can drag it and drop it and see how it looks. So I go over here to my uh, graphic t-shirt, enable it, uh, choose a regular grid, for example, or even an offset grid. Let's see. Does an offset grid change anything? No, not really. All right, so I can take this and, and just see how, how much or what size or however I want it to look. Um, I might want it to look something like this. Maybe drag some of these elements here and keep that king king look, uh, that, that king symbol in the middle. I might want to keep it somewhere at the top. It just depends on how I want to set it up. I could even make it smaller, right? I can make it like this and kind of fit the patterns in the middle. You guys could see kind of how it looks. Uh, I think I like it on how it looks on a phone case even more, honestly. I think it just fits perfectly fine with the, the different emblems that we inputted that point inwards. And that's an example. So we can run it and a similar example here. So I can go over here, go to my upload section, and I could take certain things like this, right? And I can paste them here. And I might want to do like a checkered kind of pattern. So if you look, the difference between this one and this one is a small difference, which is here and here, right? So it's literally just this kind of emblem in the middle. And you can get as creative as you want. It doesn't have to be, you know, something like this. But um, I will go over here and just drag and drop the different, the different ones. And, of course, because they're frames, they match the look. And then I will take something like this and flip it over, right? So 180 degrees, and it will be here. This just flip this over as well, right? Copy this twice, kind of move it over, move this, and do the same thing once again, kind of like that. Paste it this way, move this over here, and I can take whatever I want here. So let's say I want this to be here, this to be here. Now I have another version of a pattern, right? And if I, if I really want to add any more elements to it, I can do that. So I can go over here and lock it. So let's go over to lock and I could take that same royalty type emblem. I'm not sure what this would be called, but I can take it, paste some of it here. If I don't want it to look too, you know, too bland or too boring, right? I can take this. Let's go ahead and flip this forward, right? Something like that. And I can do that. So I could even, if I really, really wanted to and get creative, which honestly I don't recommend 
which is where you're kind of like cutting off the image. But if you do something like that, you can move this here, move this here. Okay. Do the same here. You know what I'm saying? So you can kind of set that up and I could go over here. I can download it. Let's go to 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. Go over here and let's locate it. Page eight. Let's hit download. Let that load. All right. I'm going to go into Redbubble, take the image, which is now here, upload it. And I'll kind of show you the difference there. It will kind of create like a, a line that goes sideways or uh, vertically or horizontally rather. Got that mixed up, but you can kind of see here offset grid or regular grid. There we go. And you can see how it's kind of like a line this way, but this is a perfect example. It's 100% seamless. Um, there's no breaks in it or it doesn't necessarily look that bad. And, uh, there are, there's a customer base that would like it. I know I definitely would put this on like a, um, like a bag, like a suitcase or something like that. I think it would look pretty cool depending on who your print on demand provider is, but it looks decent. Like if you have it on a mat, for example, or even something like a hardcover book like this is pretty cool. But this is, like I said, for me. Currently, at the moment, the easiest way to uh, work with seamless patterns or create specific seamless patterns that you want to have the outcome for uh, that are much easier to use. This has just been the style for me that's worked. Um, I, like I said, I've seen people who start out the gate trying to measure different things and try to create a seamless pattern out of the square. Uh, for me, that's not the way. You know, like they're trying to like measure here and add stuff. And, and it does get more complicated, especially when you're doing things with like animal type characters that it's not fully symmetrical. Um, that becomes more difficult. You know, Christmas is eventually going to come up. Halloween's coming up. You got Thanksgiving on the way. I mean, there's so many different holidays. People like to create different designs for different things. Um, I'm not much of a holiday person where I upload designs specifically for holidays unless it's for a specific website, but that's a different conversation for a different time. You know, when I say specific website, I'm talking about my own websites, but other than that, uh, that's really what it comes down to. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully it was beneficial. Hopefully it helped. And uh, I hope you enjoy. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. If you know of an easier strategy, let me know. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Bye.